Hi, I'm Vicki Libiakis and welcome to our show for your child's health. And for the next half hour, we'll be looking at ways to keep your child healthy with the experts from Children's Hospital Oakland. This week, we're going to be talking about pediatric neurosurgery and the Cranial Facial Center. Plus, we'll find out what to do if your child gets a sports injury. Joining us today is Dr. Curtis Augusti. He's a neurosurgeon at Children's Hospital Oakland. Later, we'll be joined by Dr. Bryant Toth, who co-directs the Cranial Facial Program. And before we start, a word here, you'll certainly want to consult your own physician as well for any medical advice you might receive. Well, let's just jump right into it. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. It's good to be here. A lot of us like to joke that their jobs aren't about brain surgery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yours is. <laughs> 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 and, and with children, that is a very specialized, difficult course. What got you into that? Well, um, I, I really feel like the human body, and in particular the brain, is one of the most well-defined uh, and well-operated uh, machines. And just to be able to uh, work with it is a, is a privilege. And uh, we're just now understanding um, how the brain is working and how we can help uh, fix problems with the brain. And um, this is this is a perfect time to be entering into this field and, and really contribute in some meaningful way, especially um, with kids. Um, and you know, we work so hard all day long, and I never go to bed at night wondering if if uh, what I did all day was worth it it's it's always worth it okay, from so. the outside the brain is such a mystery mm. but you actually see what's going on inside and thank mm. you for bringing this prop here yeah, to yeah. help you know walk us through some of the, mm. the problems mm. you, you also do research what kind of research do you do uh, well up until now uh, some of my earliest uh, research was working with stem cells and uh, more recently I've been looking at um, water channels in the brain um, and and really how those channels uh, play a role in things like epilepsy things like hydrocephalus where you have excess fluid in the brain um, a, a channel that moves uh, water back and forth would be one of the most reasonable first places to look obviously so, um, you know, in addition to the lab st uh, stuff like that, um, you know, I'm obviously taking care of my patients as well and, and thinking of ways of how I can translate the stuff that I do in the lab um, to the bedside and really um, not just look at the, the scientific aspect of it, but how does this really, um, how is it going to be used in a meaningful way to help patients? So, some of the more common conditions that you see in children, what are mm -hmm. they? Yeah, um, I, I would have to say hydrocephalus is one of them. Um, and, you know, hydro, water, cephalus, head, too much water in the head. It's, it's not as simple as all that, but. Is um, that common? Oh, very common. And it's about one in 500, somewhere between one in 500, one in 1,000 kids have uh, some form of hydrocephalus. Um, and it's, it's really just an imbalance. Uh, our brain is uh, bathing in a fluid, uh, and uh, you make it and you absorb it. And if there's an imbalance there and there's excess building up, uh, your child might need help uh, draining that fluid off, and that's where I come in. Okay. So. I, I, how does a parent even detect that? I mean, how do you know if your child has that? You, you can't yeah. see it, per se. Yeah. Um, the majority of times that we see hydrocephalus, it's, um, it's something that's it's progressively uh, occurring. The referrals that I get to my clinic for a, a hydrocephalus workup usually is because uh, pediatricians have been doing measurements of the head and just slowly over time the head size has been increasing. And that's okay. because the bones of our head have infused early on. Um, right. They're slowly doing so. I, yeah. Probably the best way to describe this, at least for the moment, is, is to actually meet someone who, who has this. And we had a, a chance to meet one of the young patients at Children's Hospital Oakland, a little girl by the name of Ashley. Get there. Ashley Tahardup is like a lot of four-year-olds. She likes to run oh, and play on the playground. Tease and Mr. She especially Alley. likes to Alley. sing songs with her mom, Alley. Michelle. Comes Mr. You'd never know that Ashley's Alley. little life is so touch and go. We didn't know anything was wrong. And when she was born, um, they found out she had a cleft palate. Ashley was born with a whole slew of challenges. Whoa. Her brain. Her eyes were facing down, she couldn't look up, and so they did a neuro ultrasound and found that she had hydrocephalus. So they did neurosurgery and they placed a shunt. Her heart. About two weeks after that, she wasn't eating, um, so they did an x-ray of her heart and found that she had AV canal defect. Her digestive tract. <laughs> we just got back. So we ended up getting a little G-tube placed, tummy tube, and that's what we fed her with oh, for a very long time. Hydrocephalus, which is the excessive accumulation of fluid in the brain, is complicated enough for an adult, let alone a four-year-old. So how do you explain? We just tell her that she has fluid that's up in her head and it doesn't drain right, like a sink is clogged. So they put this little shunt in 
and there's a tube that goes all the way down into her tummy and the water from up here goes through this tube all the way down here and drains. Not everybody gets one of those. Nope. All of these things have kept Ashley in and out of Children's Hospital. We've been here, here she's been through a lot. She's been here pretty much her whole life. Yeah. It's a great hospital. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Coming up on For Your Child's Health, we'll be speaking more about brain surgery and uh, that shunt that we talked about. We'll actually show it to you. Uh, we'll be right back.